Let's go over a quick way to, to make sure you know how to properly document a derivation um, in a publication. Uh, what sometimes happens is students put in uh, not enough detail or so, you know, they put every algebraic step, which really does take a long time. So documentation can take a long time. Hopefully this will show you how to do it quicker, but also if you minimize the number of equations you have to write and still keep the flow, I think you'll be a lot happier. Um, to think about it, documenting a derivation in, in a paper isn't like doing a derivation in class where the teacher might show you every single algebraic step. Um, if you're reading it, you're expected to be able to follow along. So what I like to do is in LT Spice, I have my my figure, right? Then I uh, I like Snagit, and I like to edit things in PowerPoint. And in this case, the I've kind of highlighted the non-inverting amplifier stage. So really, V out is really two VX because these are equal to each other. And yeah, I've assumed an ideal op amp. All this feedback network might be confusing, but really it's just like a load. And an ideal op amp can drive any load. So really, I've only got one nodal equation to write coming into node X. So I would, you know, what I li like I said, what I like is um, to gra screen grab this and then put it into my document. All right, and then I would add a caption, things like that. But this is really just about derivations. So in any derivation, you start it off with the assumptions, conditions, things like that. Here, you know, we assume an ideal op amp, um, and the frequencies are low enough that the, in, the parts are acting like pure resistors. This is that first nodal equation, right? And you would write something like, you know, at node X, the nodal equation is, right? Then you say, we notice that the op amp is configured, or it is noticed. We is probably not a good, you know, or just make it even simpler, the op amp, right? It's configured as a non-inverting gauge stage, R1 equals R2. The relationship between them is, between V out and Vx, is this, right? Then we apply Ohm's law to equation one, and we get that. Then we assume all the resistances are equal. And if you look at the picture, right, the value is set to R1 for all of these. So that's where you would um, see that they're all equal. Substitute, da, 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 and rearrange. That's where you, you don't have to show every little thing. The result can be seen in equation four. All right. Now, just as a quick hint, when you want to do an equation, really, you don't have to come up here and insert equation and then use all of that. It, it can, for most things, all you need to do is alt equal sign, puts it right here. Let's say I want to do R1 and I want to do a subscript. I do R1 underscore 1. Then I press the space bar. It automatically um, takes care of that, right? And R1 could be V um, underscore 1 space. Now I want to divide it. Uh, I can just put divide uh, underscore I1. Then I press the space bar. That gets me the subscript of one, press it again, and I get um, the fraction. And yeah, there's other things you can do um, for times. Type in backspace times spacebar, you get an X. Uh, backspace integrate, you get the integration symbol. Um, sometimes it's easier just to, to go up here, but just these basic things for doing equations um, we'll s we're superscripting and subscripting and yeah uh, superscripting would be here caret 7 right. 
Just those simple keyboard shortcuts will save you an enormous amount of time. So I hope you use them.